up to the 1960s. I borrowed terms and phrases from that literature and I adapted them to the study of Nazism. So today about 90% of the language in use is the language that I uh, came up with in the, in the 90s. It's a derivative. But I did, the, I did it first and foremost to capture my experience so, initially. So, so today, much is a derivative of your exploration into understanding or setting a language for what you were going through. Yeah, it 90, started like that. 90%. It started- I'm going to make sure I understand. 90% of what everyone is batting around <laughs> came about because you were... Well, the language. The, the, language, language, the language. The, the overall yeah, language. Yeah, the language, yeah. The language is easily 90%, if not more. I mean, flying monkeys, hoovering, uh, somatic narcissists, cerebral narcissists, inverted narcissists, um, narcissistic supply, false self, devalue and discard, narcissistic abuse. These are all my creations or adaptations of early early psychoanalytic analytic literature. In 1995, you were a professional at that time, yes? Right? You were a professional? I was, a, I was actually oh, a no. businessman. Oh, you were a, business. a businessman. Okay. All right, you were a businessman. Now, did you, did you and know? And a physicist. And a physicist. And a physicist. Right. right. That's right. You're, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you that's right. I'm just saying everything that I've been reading about you. Uh, you would consider me a stalker. <laughs> so it was, I've been studying you. I haven't got much sleep since the, uh, we, we've been talking. I just want to tell you this. I'm trying to wrap my brain around this much. Before that time frame, there was no one that could help you with the language. Were you seeing a therapist or anything like that at that time? Nobody could give so you. I was diagnosed by two therapists, but you must you must realize that the first time narcissistic personality disorder yeah. had, appear, had appeared in any meaningful text yeah. was 19, 1980. That's not a long time ago. No, that is not. Okay, you're, no. blowing, you're blowing my mind, Sam. Night, okay, that's so not long that's, ago. That's not long ago. So when the first time I've been diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder was 1985. That was five years after NPD made it into the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Got it, got it. No one knew anything about NPD. Nothing. There was nothing. There was no literature, no scholarship, no, nothing. It was virgin land, terra incognita. As, when I when I attempted to describe to people what's going on inside me right, and what it is that I'm doing to my so-called nearest and dearest, my insignificant others, my non-intimate partners, you right. know, when I was trying to, to convey this, when I was trying to communicate, I had to resort to, to phrases half a page long. And then I said, the heck with it. I mean, I must come up with a language, you know. Right. So I did. I did come up with a language. Of course, a lot of time had passed since then. Um, the field had evolved beyond recognition. There are many dozens of new contributors, and hundreds maybe of new contributors and so on. But I think I think my initial work was pioneering and, and I think it had transformed, it had transformed society in, in several ways. For example, today, the concept of narcissism is an organizing principle. Today, when you try to explain someone's behavior, I get you. Polit- politics. Yes. Yeah. Corporate misbehavior. Yeah. Uh, the law, right. law enforcement, mm-hmm. um, victimhood movements, or, um, you know, when today narcissism serves as the principle of organization of social and individual interactions. I see it in movies. I can't go, I can't watch any movie. I can't watch any documentary without coming across the word narcissism in the first five minutes. Narcissism, narcissist, this, that. So today, narcissism is, is a buzzword and a keyword. It is by far the, the hot button topic in psychology. Yes. yes. If that's the case, does it seem like the very concept of what it, what it stood for when you started has been watered down, diluted? or confused? Yes, narcissism, of course, pathological narcissism is a clinical entity. In other words, it's a diagnosis in clinical psychology, abnormal psychology. Mm -hmm. And now it's been exactly as you say, it's been diluted or watered down and it became a pejorative. It became became a a curse word. There you go. It became a way to demean and devalue other people you don't like. Label people. Institutions. Institutions you don't like. Politicians, whatever it may be, uh, it, yeah. it could be it could be any structure. You can label it that way, and uh, yeah. people could run with it in many directions. 
But when it came to your life, it began to give you an opportunity to explain what you were putting others through. Would you say, how'd you say, insignificant others? Is that what you said? Yeah. You that's, need, that's, a new, that's a new hashtag. You need to put that on one of your postings. That is, that's a hashtag. <laughs> you should start. Uh, that's a whole T-shirt line, that you, a merchandise line you can start right there. The sure. insignificant others. What were you doing to others? If you had a way to describe it succinctly, shrink wrap, I, I, how would you describe back then the Sam of 1995, 80, 85 to, to 95 before you? Not, nothing, nothing has changed. It's a common myth. It's a common myth that insight and learning and knowledge changes cause, tra- cause transformation. No, it's not true. Okay. I know everything there is to know about narcissism. I wish to believe, and yet nothing has changed in me. I'm exactly the same as I as I had always been. And what I do to other people, especially intimate partners, but not only business partners. Okay. What I do to other people is that I objectify them. I take away their vitality. I reduce them. I reduce them to a function, an instrument, a tool, a device. I make them lose the ability to conceive of themselves as separate entities with rights, wishes, preferences, priorities, and so on. I assimilate and digest them. I body snatch and mind snatch. Do do you find... And then I take over from the inside. Okay, so do you find yourself affecting other individuals' thought patterns, desires, motivation... And if so, do you affect other people's thought patterns? Because when you walk into a room or when you begin to just talk with them? Everything I say apply to, applies to all narcissists, especially to psychopathic narcissists. But I zombify them. I take away their vitality, as I just say, said. Okay. I, I render them zombies. Okay. They go through the motions. They say the right things. But there's no sparkle in their eyes. There's no spark in their eyes anymore. It's There's zapped. No blood flow. It's zapped. It's zapped. It's not in their eyes anymore. So uh, then I ask you this, because you're educating me beyond belief. I, this is like an audience of one. So just bear with me. Um, sure. You're, you're going to see me being giddy because, uh, dude, I just you're like in my petri dish. I just want to just check you out. <laughs> I just find you fascinating. Um, sure. I'll throw a word at you, and you tell me what you think. The word affection. How do you view the word affection and any any connotations or thoughts that come with that from your perspective? I'm incapable of experiencing positive emotions because in in my world, positive emotions are intimately linked with negative emotions and negative emotions are life-threatening or dysregulated. Got it. Got it. So if I allow myself to experience anything positive, the gates gates of trauma will open Will will open wide for you, and I'll drown. I'll the, drown. I'll dysregulate. The, the gates of trauma for you will open up. So therefore, yes. you have to navigate and pivot away from those. Or do I you have to repress? I have to repress repent. my positive emotions Got because it. if I allow myself to emote, I I will have I will have opened the gates of my early childhood trauma. Okay, and I will drown. I'll become dysregulated. Technically, I'll become borderline. Have you technically? Okay, and and when you when you when a person say you, when a person, let's say it's me, let's say I'm doing that. If I start to move toward being borderline, what does that mean for those? Because a lot of beginners down this journey or dealing with narcissism, listen and watch Narc Abuse TV Network, uh, what my daughters and I uh, provide for people. It's a public service channel. If I start moving toward borderline, what does that mean? What does that mean for me and the people around me? There was a scholar by the name of uh, Rothschild. He said that uh, Rothschild. He said that uh, borderline personality disorder is a failed attempt to become a narcissist. <laughs> it's when you fail to become a narcissist as a child that you end up being borderline. Okay. Now, what happens with the narcissist is reverse engineering. When you expose the narcissist to stress, especially a challenge to the narcissist's grandiosity, mm-hmm. humiliation, especially public humiliation. The narcissist goes through a process called narcissistic injury or narcissistic wounding. Another much, much more profound process is called narcissistic mortification. In these two processes, the defenses of the narcissist crumble, disappear. 
And consequently, the narcissist is exposed to an, a tsunami of negative emotionality, including shame, guilt, fear, etc. At that point, he becomes technically a borderline. So narcissistic rage, narcissistic rage is a borderline state of narcissism. At that point, he becomes a borderline in the sense that he can no longer control his emotions. They become dysregulated. They take over. He's overwhelmed. He drowns in them. And he flails around and, and he lashes out. And he, mm -hmm. so he becomes very injurious to other people, dangerous to other people. Now, in some cases, um, a psychopathic state emerges. Right. So the, the transition is from narcissism to borderline and then to psychopathy. Now, that's not a steady pattern that will happen all the time then, but it can lead to a psychopathic aspect from the borderline. A derivative of it will they can move into that area. Or Let me rephrase that. I'm going to go back to me. I could go from being borderline and then move to that psychopathic state. All borderlines, all people in a borderline state, yeah. let alone with borderline personality disorder, all of them have a psychopathic self-state. Ah, okay. Right. So it's a protective state. It's a savior state. It's a rescuer state. The psychopathic state? It, yes, the psychopathic oh. state helps to defend and protect the borderline from, from abandonment, from humiliation, from rejection, right. from fear, from shame, from guilt. So when the borderline experiences stress, when she feels that she's about to be abandoned, abandonment anxiety, right, right. when she can no longer regulate her emotions, mm -hmm. suddenly she becomes a secondary psychopath. A secondary psychopath is a psychopath with emotions and empathy. So she becomes a secondary psychopath and she begins to behave like a psychopath would. It's the same with the narcissist. When the narcissist is challenged, his grandiosity is challenged and undermined, mm -hmm. when he's devalued, when he's humiliated, exposed, when he, whatever, when he's exposed, right, right, right. He then he then transitions to borderline, and then the borderline experiences dysregulated emotions, and the narcissist becomes a psychopath, a, sec, a, a secondary psychopath. secondary psycho psychopath. When they get into the, <laughs> excuse me, I'm back to me. So I get into a secondary psychopath state. When I say as a narcissist, into, excuse me, just correct. As yes. a narcissist, you are incapable of empathy and emotions, so you will transition to a primary psychopath. Not secondary. Okay, got it. And now yeah. once once I'm in that state, mm, everybody in my uh, in my sphere, everyone in my anybody that I come across, I'm going to super duper lash out. As a psychopath in the psychopathic self state, yeah, you are you are defiant, you are contumacious, you hate authority, uh, you uh, are you are reckless, yeah. you are impulsive, you are aggressive. In the, in the psychopathic huge, system. Huge, huge emotional pushback and, and defiance will, will come to the fore, is kind of what you're saying. If I, defiance, correct, aggression, me, correct me if I understand you. Yes, defiance, aggression, um, hatred of authority and rules, uh, impuls, impulsivity, recklessness. Yes. You will do crazy things that will endanger people around you. you know? Right, right, right. And now, is, is it possible that I would de escalate or come down from that? You do, always. Okay, this is always. a temporary substance. Okay. It's a temporary substance. Having reestablished your grandiosity as a narcissist, because when you become a psychopath, you terrify everyone around you. You set everything so, back in order, as it were. You, yes, you, you feel godlike. You, yeah, you as a psychopath, the, you feel godlike, yeah. because okay, everyone yeah. is terrified of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so your, gran your grandiosity is restored, and once your grandiosity is restored, you don't need to be a psychopath anymore. You can go back to being a narcissist. If this becomes a pattern... That a person can, if, if this is a pattern that I have from childhood and I've perfected it, I can set the world or the universe in my own mind. I'm just saying this. You're the expert. Again, <laughs> an audience of one. You're enduring my, my weirdness here. Okay, so then I can pretty much set the world uh, back in order if I don't think uh, everything's going my way and I'm about to get exposed to childhood trauma and emotions or whatever it may be. <clears throat> All I have to do is when I get to that psychopathic, a primary stage, if I'm understanding you correctly. Primary, primary psychopathic. Right? Self okay. I can pretty much set the world back in order and I could be godlike and put everything back and now everything's okay. Cause I've, I've made sure everybody's afraid of me or yes. what I, or what I could do to them, leave them, abandon them, take their, affect their finances. You feel omnipotent. You feel omnipotent. Yeah, you, you feel go. all powerful. 
Perfect. All powerful, and then then you don't need to be a psychopath because your grandiosity oh, no. had been right. restored. You're yeah. narcissist. Yeah, I can I can go back down to being a narcissist, as it were. Right. This pattern of existence is not just one or two people on the planet. Have you recognized that it's an ongoing pattern that's growing? Well, we should distinguish very carefully, and this distinction is lost on many self-styled experts and so on. We should distinguish between narcissistic personality disorder, okay. mal malignant narcissism, which is a confluence of psychopathy and narcissism, mm -hmm. and narcissistic style. Now, the concept of narcissistic style was first described by Lynn Sperry. Lynn, Lynn Sperry is a scholar. Theodore Millen, another guy. I'm taking notes. Okay, so just and Lynn Sperry and Theodore Millen described the narcissistic style. Narcissistic style is simply someone who is an a-hole, you know, okay. just an a-hole. He tramples on everyone. He's insensitive. He cracks the wrong jokes at the wrong time. Right, he's right, exploitative. Right. Exploitative. He's a, he's a bit abusive, and so on and so forth. But he doesn't amount to a full-fledged narcissist. It is estimated that up to 15%, 1-5% of the population have narcissistic style. The figure is much higher among the young, among people under the age of 25. Really? The, yes. So, so much, much. just real quick before you keep going, the narcissistic style, we're not talking to somebody that's going to give a major pushback. They're just being a major jerk. Yes. Okay. All right. Go ahead. You were yes. going to say. Jerks. That's a word. Jerks. Okay. And this is much more common among the young than among the older generations. There are studies by J John Twench and Keith Campbell and many others that had demonstrated that this kind of narcissism, narcissistic style, had exploded among the young and is five times higher than 40 years ago. So it seems to be the style, the personality style, the dominant personality style of young people, possibly because of the influence of social media. Social media, I was going to say that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly, yeah. possibly. Well, it could, it could, we don't know, we don't know which is the, the chicken, door. which is the egg. We're, yeah, but well, one thing is for sure, you, you're going to get you're going to get chicken in one way or the other, either scrambled yeah. or you're going to get it cooked, one or the other. So, so either way, social media could be feeding that. Uh, but yep. that's that's something uh, that's a whole nother show. But but when it so comes, that's a narcissistic style, and then the, you have narcissistic personality yeah. disorder. Okay, in narcissistic people. personality disorder is diagnosed in about one percent of the population. One percent. Okay. And there are nine diagnostic criteria, and there is an alternative model of narcissistic personality disorder in the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Okay. It's a severe, a very severe mental health disorder. Um, Kernberg, Otto Kernberg, who was one of the leading scholars of the field, of, in the field, thought that narcissism is a form of psychosis, okay. psychotic disorder. Mm -hmm. So it's a really, really a very bad affliction. And then you have the combination of this with psychopathy. Okay, before they, you, that before, is not before, that is malignant narcissism. With with all due respect, please bear with me. Uh, yeah. When you because I'm writing this down, when you get to this aspect of the NPD, before we get to the one you just mentioned, mm -hmm. the NPD. Now, the first one we said, you know, we're talking about a major jerk. How would you, in a few words, describe this for those who are just trying to understand and who will watch this later? How would you? Everything is more extreme. In the narcissistic style, there's a deficit in empathy. In NPD, there's no empathy. The narcissistic style would try to leverage people, to use people, to obtain goals. Got it. The narcissist would trample and destroy people in the uh, pursuit of goals. Got it. Everything is simply more extreme. Got it. Um, so, the for example, the narcissistic style would be mildly, mildly envious of other people's accomplishments and so on. The narcissist would try to destroy uh, people he envies. We're talking. So we're envy, talking. Envy is a dominant feature. We're, we're talking about somebody that that does some major demolition to somebody's life. Yes, they're they're not coming yes. in and just kicking a few things around and throwing a table. No, they're not benign. They're not, they're not benign. They're not benign. Not, but, no, no. Not by benign. any means, they're not benign. They're coming in, no. uh, driven by envy or 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 something like that, and uh, fueled with anger and other things, and they're trying to make sure you don't exist. Uh, entitlement. Entitlement. Very oh, entitled. Okay, a good one. okay entitled. for example, people with narcissistic style are not entitled. People with NPD are entitled. Entitlement really? simply means that simply means that you think you deserve some things, special treatment to talk to the top people, whatever, without any commensurate achievements, 
without any investment, without any effort, without any. So you believe you deserve to be uh, to have a PhD without having invested a minute in <laughs> yeah, studies, right. yeah? And everything that comes with the PhD, you want you want the PhD, and you, right, want, you want the money, with, you want the, want the prestige, want the lifestyle, you want everything, but, but everything, and not. Yeah, but not you don't want to it. invest in, in not, your studies. No work for it. So, yeah, right, right, right. Want, yeah, want, so want, this is entitlement. That's entitlement. Now, now that's uh, not MPG. that's not that's not uh, apparent or a part of a narcissistic style, though. Correct. No. Okay, no. got it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So you were going to say. So, so these these narcissists, this one percent of the population, and today there is a trend in academia, in universities where I teach. I teach. I, okay. I teach yes. psychology in several universities. Mm -hmm. Colleagues of mine in in other universities. They try to espouse the view that narcissism and psychopathy are positive evolutionary adaptations, that it's good to be a narcissist, that we need narcissists in positions of power and authority, like chief executive officers, okay, presidents okay. of the United States. All I can do is shake I, my hand. I strongly oppose this ignorant view. This is enormous ignorance. This is not knowing the first thing about narcissism. I, I'm, I'm surprised by that. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin Dutton, Macobi, I can give you many names. That's high functioning, high functioning narcissists, it's called. So. Wow. Productive, productive narcissists and high functioning narcissists and productive psychopaths. I don't even know what to say to that. And there are whole, there's a whole, there, there's a whole library of books saying that psychopaths are the best thing that has ever happened to humanity because they can make tough decisions. They, they, you know, they're great military leaders and surgeons. Wow. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's a great thing we have psychopaths. We should encourage them and egg them on. And breed them, as it were. Yeah, in a way. So I don't think these people know what the heck they're talking about, honestly. Because, for example, narcissists, they start off very convincingly and very charmingly. They, they co-opt everyone around them. They create cults, personality cults, and so on. But they end up badly. Everything around them goes up in flames. Adolf Hitler, Donald Trump, everything goes up in flames at the end. There's no such thing as a productive, high-functioning narcissist. It's nonsensical myth, you know, and not not backed by the by most of the literature. Most. So that's our problem. Now, malignant narcissists are really, really by far the most dangerous. They are even more dangerous than psychopaths. Because oh, wait, are this, pure, is, is this a part yeah. of the psychopathy part that you're talking about? The malignant, are they in there? Is this a whole different? Malignant level? narcissists are, are confluence, combination, psychopath and narcissist uh, in the same person. Got it. Okay. They are by far the most dangerous breed. And you are talking to one right now. They're what? the most dangerous breed. Why is that? Because a, a proper psychopath, what we call factor one psychopath, mm -hmm. a proper psychopath, he is goal oriented. He wants money. He wants sex. He wants power. He gets what he wants. He doesn't bother with you. He's not, he's not going to harm you. So he's very goal oriented. Yeah, he's ruthless. He's callous. He has no scruples. He's impulsive. He's defiant. He is aggressive. It's all true. But at least he's human. The psychopath is human because you want sex also, don't you? You want money. You want power. It's a human aspiration. It's just that on the way to his goal, he would be he's less scrupulous than you, less moral yeah. than you. He's chopping down trees uh, through the forest yeah. uh, to get to where he wants to go instead of just yeah. walking through the forest and enjoying the trees. He's looking at it and right. going like, you know what? That tree don't need to be there. It's in my way. But you're both but you're both headed to the same destination. Driven by the same, uh, uh, as it were, in natural human impulse or desire. Yeah. Except, except, yeah. Yeah, except uh, a not little so. bit. Not so the malignant narcissist. No. The malignant narcissist. Not so the narcissist when it when it is combined with psychopath. Uh, because when the narcissist is combined with psychopath, then this this type is not driven by goals. Is driven by impulses, dysregulated emotions, envy, yeah. hatred, lack of empathy. So it's like this kind of narcissist has all the tools of the psychopath, lack of morality, lack of, lack morality. of scruples. Yeah, right, right. And leverages the psychopath to accomplish narcissistic uh, gratification, goals, goals and gratification. Right. It's uh, the the uh, everything. The horse has been let out of the pen when the when the two are combined, and, yes. and it's off and running. Now, now, in the process of it being off and running, they are combined. Can they mask it? And people have no idea they're like that. 
Can they be overly charming to the point that someone could end up thinking they can have a relationship with them, do business with them? Depends. I wouldn't generalize. People online tend to generalize and say yes. Well, I wouldn't yeah. generalize. Yeah. Depends. I think it depends on thespian skills, on skills of acting. Some of us can act well, some of us cannot act well. For example, many narcissists, they are too grandiose. They say, why would I invest any effort in acting? Who are you that I would invest an effort for you? Uh, that's you a good know? One. Okay, I'm sorry. That's pretty good. I get you. No, I get like, you. Why do I need, why why do I need, I need to, to act? That? Well, I don't need to act. Yeah. I, I mean, I who the heck do, are you? Why would I, I act for you? I'll I mean, just do what I'm going to do. And yeah, I'll I have well, my way, my way of the highway. highway. Yeah. I mean, F you, F you. Why would yeah. I act for you? Yeah, you I don't know? need to act. That's a waste of my time. Yeah, right. They would a waste of my time I'll and, do and it denigrates do. me. It means I'm inferior to you. It means I want something from you. It means yeah. I need something from if you. If I have to manipulate my basic way of living as a, as a malignant, uh, psychopathic narcissist, then I've wasted my time. I don't have to. I just, I just take it from you. And I'll, I'll I am who I am. somebody else, if I have power, to go and take it from you. Bring it to me. I am who I am. There you it's go. my way or the highway. Yeah, yeah. You don't like it, F off. Yeah, right. Simple. So why would I need to act for you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm superior to you. Vastly superior. Why would I need to demean myself and humiliate myself and humble myself to yeah. act for you? Right. To even take waste uh, my energy to, to go that route. Yeah. Now, is that the considered way, a psychopath? But, oh, no. Go ahead. You're going to say, please. By the way, similarly, uh, many, many narcissists and psychopaths do not lie. They're brutally honest. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Wait, no. See, because wait, why, gonna... why would I need to lie for you? I mean, to lie is to invest an effort. Do you deserve this effort? Do they brag? You don't deserve this wait, effort. Do they brag about the fact that they don't lie?